everyone. We're in the green room, live in the D style, That's and right. we're starting off with satiated tummies because we are mere minutes removed from having Pacific mm. Rim, a great Asian fusion restaurant. It was delicious. We are two very happy people. So Michelle discovered this gem in Ann Arbor and tells us about, it's kind of Pan-Asian. They've got a lot going on, but the food was spectacular. So check out her piece. There goes that chef's kiss again. May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, so we thought we would take you to a place that is serving up dishes from all across the Pacific. It has a long history in Ann Arbor, being first a Korean restaurant and then transforming to include other Asian cuisines. Michelle Oliver is taking us to dine in the D at Pacific Rim. With some dishes inspired by Japanese flavors and others from Korea, Pacific Rim in Ann Arbor gives you a taste of its namesake. The menu is just a spectrum of the whole Pacific Rim of cuisines. It's um, authentic Asian, but it's just my own take, uh, and often it's a contemporary version. The restaurant originally opened in 1980 with a different name. Started out as a Korean restaurant called Kana Korean Cuisine, and in 2000, the son of the original owners, a friend of mine, took it over and wanted to change it to include other Asian cuisines. That's where Chef Duke Tang comes in. I had never set foot in a restaurant kitchen before. I just love to cook at home, and, and the menu, it's, it's kind of a reflection of my background. I was born in Vietnam. Uh, my family fled the country after the war, and we lived in refugee camps in Hong Kong, in the Philippines. I finally immigrated to California. My wife is Korean, so I learned Korean cuisine from her mom and grandma, and my mom is a great cook. Growing up in that kind of environment gave me a sense of flavors and what go well together. With the change in menu came a change in the restaurant's design. The curtains I sewed, the tables, the booths, uh, all the woodwork, I did mostly myself. I love having a hand in all those details. I can't wait to dig in, so let's get into the menu and we're going to start with one of their appetizers. This is their unagi terrine. So you start off with sushi rice, avocados, broiled eel, and it's topped with marinated seaweed, soy syrup, and wasabi oil. Next, we have a crowd pleaser, the Thai style calamari. In the breading of this is a togarashi spice, giving it a nice bit of flavor there, and it's served with Thai sweet chili sauce. Now we have a Chinese-inspired appetizer with their crispy pork belly served over chilled soba noodles. It also is topped with marinated shiitake mushrooms with a ginger mirin sauce. Next we have a dish that's very close to home for the chef. This is their Saigon spring rolls and this is based after his mother's recipe. In it is tiger shrimp, taro, you have lots of nice vegetables in there and it comes with a chili lime dipping sauce. Moving on to entrees, we have this Japanese style sable fish, also known as black cod, and it really soaks up the miso sake marinade that they put on it. It's served over stir fried veggies and it's drizzled with a soy tamarind sauce. Next, we have a Thai inspired entree with their seared sea scallops. Now these are served over a bed of jasmine coconut rice, and it's in this sauce where they really get the Thai inspiration. Coconut milk, ginger, a little bit of carrot juice, lemongrass and that curry flavor. It's served with a side of sauteed veggies. This is the Korean marinated ribeye and it's their take on a bibimbap. The ribeye steak is marinated in bulgogi seasoning. They're serving it over rice with sauteed veggies, a little bit of kimchi, and it's finished with a quail egg. And finally, one of their most popular dishes, the seared big eye tuna. It's served with crispy sushi rice as well as a hickama salad. And it's finished with a ginger miso sauce, wasabi oil, and soy syrup. Okay, I don't know how we managed to not start eating already. I know, I'm, Michelle, I'm impressed by your willpower thank right you. now. Thank you for that. <laughs> so what did you bring in for us today? So these are my two favorite dishes that I tried when I was there. This is the ribeye. It's Korean marinated, which means it kind of has like that bulgogi seasoning to it. Think of it as like a really fancy bibimbap. Okay. Um, and then in front of Tati, for her, we have this 
um, sable fish, which is also known as black cod. It's mm -hmm. really rich and buttery. Think of it kind of similar to a Chilean sea bass. Okay. Um, it soaks up that sake miso marinade, and it has that soy tamar tamarind sauce on top of it. Mm -hmm. We got it gluten free. This one can be made gluten free. She's sharing. I'm I like sharing. how I like how polite she is. She's like, I'm sharing before yeah. I'm trying. Mm. Jason, what do you think of the steak? Uh, phenomenal. I'm very Are curious you about me? this. Yes. And then did you just double dip? I did not. Okay. No, he, 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 he swiped. <laughs> he swiped. We have it all on tape. We can listen, go back. Listen, Costanza. <laughs> um, and then as they're eating that, I'll describe this one. This is one of their pork belly appetizers. It has shiitake mushrooms on top and chilled soba noodles on the bottom. This is another great dish. Um, I. These were all just phenomenal. That steak? I don't even know how. What do you think of the fish? It, it's, I'm about to taste it right it's now. It's great. I, the fish is great. I like mm. the uh, tam tamari sauce. Yeah. It's like a, a super mm. um, concentrated soy sauce. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. It's like reduced, and, I think, right? Mm -hmm. mm. It has so much flavor. I Both could, of these dishes have so much flavor. I could drink soy sauce. That's how much I love it. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's wow. awesome. I'm going to try this spicy red something over here with the meat. Yes, that's basically kind of like a gochujang sauce because um, that's all kind of Korean inspired. Each dish kind of has a home country that it's mostly focused on. Oh, wow. You like it with the this sauce? Is phenomenal. Right? This is, I, this is a good. This is a good place. This is a really good place. I love right? the food here. Yeah, I mean, this is in the same league as Miss Kim. Yeah, yeah. we're in a different dimension right now. I'm sorry, and I know is we that... have like a whole show to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the chef um, definitely has never stepped into a kitchen before. I just am so impressed by the fact that he just kind of learned as he went. He was one of those guys. Anything he touched, he went to gold. He went to Yale, mm -hmm. was pre-med, and then was just like, hey, I'm gonna go try being a a chef instead. You this never happens. You never pick up the entire plate and just I know, go for right? it. I know, right? I know. Tati has been eyeing this all morning. Um, they also have a patio that we should talk about. Um, Ann Arbor has shut down part of the streets right now and to allow restaurants to expand parking. So if you want to eat outdoors, enjoy the beautiful weather we've been having and some delicious food, this is definitely a place to do it so that they have the expanded patio because of that. Oh, We're in God. love. Right? Okay. <laughs> just dip some steak in the brown sauce. Mm. We're in heaven right now. Where so, are they located? And so they're located mm. at Pacific Rim is located at 114 West Liberty Street in downtown Ann Arbor. Michelle, thank you so much. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. <laughs> this is awesome. Honestly, if, if we lived in Ann Arbor, it would be like Monday at Miss Kim, Tuesday yes. here. Right. Seriously, yeah. so just bop around want? all those different places. Love Ann Arbor. Well, if you love all things foodie related in Metro Detroit and you want rec restaurant recommendations and behind the scenes chats with fellow foodies sign up for the dine in the d newsletter it's sent straight to your inbox every thursday sign up look for the newsletter tab at the top of click on detroit and while you're online you can join our dine in the d group on facebook that way you'll always be in the know when it comes to the best food around town and what did you have in front of you again is that the pork belly this is the pork belly i need I to you should try that did you want to try that you have to all right it would only be right okay all right, my, don't mind my, my fingers. All right, go for it's okay. it. Okay, so the debate is two great Asian places in Ann Arbor. Lil, uh, Miss Kim. Yes. I was about to say Lil' Kim. <laughs> Miss Kim. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something if she opened an Asian restaurant? Uh, oh, and then God. Pacific Rim. And uh, I'm right on the fence about which places. I'm going to give them both four stars. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I love that fish, though. I think you're leaning more toward Pacific I think Rim. I am. I okay. think Nothing I am. Nothing wrong with that. I think I am. Nothing wrong with Greg Russell when he's talking movies. That's right. Downton Abbey. The movie comes out tonight. And hear what he had to say. You know, Greg has opinions. And, and, this and bad accents, me. too. <laughs> and this one surprised me. All right. I feel as though I should speak with a British accent for this real talk because Downton Abbey is back on the big screen. Movie reviewer Greg Russell is here to let us know about that and a couple of other things to watch. Hey, Greg, what's up? Doing well. I actually wore the right T-shirt then, yes. Well, uh, yes, I do randomly use British accents. Yes, of course. <laughs> Let's start with the lords and ladies of Downton Abbey, a new era. <laughs> Fun movie. Uh, uh -oh. It's all about the family. And they've got a couple of storylines going. One, which... Don't want to give away because that's kind of like the big secret one, but some big scandal almost happens in the south of France. And the other part is a movie company comes there, they rent a Downton Abbey to make a movie, and this is back like in the 1930s, and 
even to today, like, you know, most people don't want somebody shooting a movie in their house. Right. Back then, they were going, we don't want these movie people here. <laughs> Get them out. Let's take a look at this interview. This has to be like the greatest family reunion now when you guys get together to do a project. Oh, I mean, it's everything for me. Um, they, they really are my extended family. I mean, I, I'm a person that's living away from their country as an American in England. And I never ever thought that I would really be welcomed. Um, I mean, obviously I love living there, but for, for me to be a part of this cast and lo and behold here I am in the middle in the in the, the bosom of, of this family and beyond my wildest dreams it's it's happiness for me whereas not to give you know anything away but it's just kind of intriguing because you always think I thought I knew you you know like that sure that's true yeah, yeah that, that's true I think um Elizabeth only discovered that she had Shirley MacLaine as a mother after about uh, yeah. three seasons. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's, 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 that's part of the, the, the treat of Julian Fellows' writing is that there are always these little, uh, little nuggets being uncovered along the way, little surprises which make you reassess what you thought you, <laughs> you, know, who you, thought you were. It, and it's lovely to think that here we are in our second movie, having done six seasons, one movie, and people still have an appetite and still want to, to see this whole saga, you know, further itself. So it's amazing. Yeah. We and it's, it. it's just so lovely to be a part of something that has, you know, brought people so much joy. Okay, so I thought I detected a little something in your voice when we started this part of the segment. So how many reels for the new Downton Abbey? I'm going to give the new Downton Abbey a four and a half. What? Yes, it's a very, I know. Yes. <laughs> I, thought a, you, I, I thought that you, so did you play me? Did you I play think me? so. I think you did, because I was expecting, ah. a, I was expecting three stars. Ah, no, it's, it's a really reels. good movie. And something else I've got to give this film credit for is, even if you've never seen the show or yeah. the other movie, you won't feel lost watching this. You can pick up. Right, you can pick right up and right. enjoy it. And uh, the guy, the actor Hugh Bonneville that yeah. plays Paddington Bear's dad, yeah. so good. Yes. Right, next up, something for the kids and people who were kids in the 90s. Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers back in a new animated movie that has everything from CGI to claymation. Uh, I've heard from our producer that it's like Roger Rabbit Jr. It is. It's this bizarre thing because Chip and Dale, they had kind of broken, broken up, you know, after the Rescue Rangers. Dale really just kind of felt really bad, just like, nobody likes me, what am I going to do? So he goes off and he gets a CGI makeover. Okay. That's why he looks the way he does in the movie. All right, let's take a look at a, a clip here. So, what's been up with you? Oh, you know, this, that, other vague things to fill the space of this conversation. Okay, well, you look the same. Yeah, thanks. And you look different. Ah, uh, hey, it's no secret I had the CGI surgery done, and it's done wonders rejuvenating my career. I'm actually starring in a play tonight. But man, I tell you, the real hot ticket is Rescue Rangers. There's even some buzz about a reboot. Someone started a Facebook fan page for it and everything. Crikey, a Facebook fan page? But don't just give those away. Oh, he's full of it, man. <laughs> So traditional 2D animation with the CGI with live action backdrop. Yes. Very interesting. I would see this. Yeah. And also there are a lot of other characters, you know, like uh, cartoons from the Disney planet that are in it, as well as some of the others that weren't part of Disney. Okay. So hence the Roger Rabbit reference. Yes. Uh, how many reels? Uh, kid four. And also an adult four. four. Yeah. Adult I mean, four too. Yeah. Because we, it was okay. it's just fun watching because you're going, this is so absurd. <laughs> Finally, a new movie out on Amazon Video called Emergency that looks some, like a comedy thriller. What, yeah, what is it's, it's kind of a mixture of everything. It's all about these guys. They're graduating from college. And you know how, like, that last time in college, you want to go out and go to all these parties. They get back to their dorm room, and there's a girl who's passed out on the floor. Okay. And they don't know what to do. And every time they try to revive her or get her out or whatever, just the situation just gets weird. Okay. Got to talk to the cast. Here we go. <clears throat> Definitely a roller coaster ride because you <laughs> don't really know what's happening when you get down to the bottom. In a very, a very revealing and, and also therapeutic moment, I mm -hmm. feel like, for a friendship between three people. Right. You feel me? I feel like um, the boys started as the boys 
And then they became the boys at the end of the movie because we we unbreakable after that. Uh, we we didn't know if we were gonna make it through the end of this night, but we were down for each I other. I think I am sort of carrying the burden throughout the whole film of, or at least in Carlos's perspective, of being responsible. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's this anxiety that it's just like like we are suffering right now. We're going through all this pain because I'm such a like such a fool. Like how could I do this? Um, and uh, you don't really get to know Carlos outside of dealing with this traumatic experience. So you just get to see him insofar as how he how he deals with this, right? And um, and it's just like just a really horrible. <laughs> so he's no, not because obviously we're not going to give anything away, but I mean he just winds up in a very scary situation, Absolutely. right? And it's inevitable. You know, it's one of those things where you you hear stories about it, but you're like, ah, it never happened to me. You know, you know, it happens to other people, but it's like, yeah, this is it's really well, we talked about it when you see yourself in it. And then all it takes is one time for that to happen to you. And it's like, it's really, really unlikely until it's right at your doorstep. Right, exactly. you know? OK, so uh, I mean, it is 2022, kind of a troubling premise or setup. The girl passed out on the floor. What, right. What do you give for reals? Uh, three and a half. OK, it's also you get to see it on Amazon, you know, as well. But yeah, it's one of those where be in the mood, you know, to watch it. It is deep at times. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, where can people see more of your interviews and movie stuff? Well, they can actually go to MovieShowPlus.com. Check out the things there. And they've got more interviews, also more giveaways. So please join us. Sir Greg, thank you for being here. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sir Jason, <laughs> right you now. <laughs> All right, everyone. Happy Friday. Thanks for hanging out with us for Live in the D and for Live in the D in the green room. What she said. What he said. Bye. Have a great weekend.